The Commander X16 VRAM Allocation Guide 2 Before you can allocate your VRAM, you first need to understand how much you have and what conditions you can use it. The CX16 has 128k of VRAM and 512k of RAM. You can expand the RAM up to 2 megabytes. Note the black line between the blue area and the red area. The Vera cannot see the RAM and the CPU cannot see VRAM. They are not shared as on a Commodore machine. The only way the CPU can see the VRAM is via a small port to the Vera. So adding more RAM does not give you more VRAM. You can't allocate any more RAM to the Vera. You might think that you can put more RAM chips on the board for the Vera so you can expand its RAM. However, that is not actually how it works. The RAM is inside the Vera's chip. My guess is it's block RAM from the FPGA, and the FPGA probably has 128k of it. This is necessary as it gives the Vera superpowers. The internal RAM is fast. I would expect it to be 100 MHz plus, but also probably dual ported, allowing two things to write to it at once. This gives the Vera the unique aspect of being able to access the VRAM at any point in the frame. Traditionally, you are limited to only vertical and horizontal blank areas, such as the NES and SNES. Or you can get a chip that has a FIFO buffer that lets you transfer some data at much slower rates during visual regions, such as on the Mega Drive and Master System. For char and tile maps, the VRAM usage depends on how big a map you select. The Vera allows either access to be 32, 64, 120, or 256. 32 by 32 is only 2K, but not usable for much, while a 256 by 256 one will eat the entire 128K. If you want two layers, then you need to double the amount used. Need to double buffer? Double. Want to double buffer and have two layers? Then quadruple. The first step is working out how big of a map do you actually need. The optimal map size changes depending upon your char size. For 8x8 tiles, 32 and 64 sizes just don't cut it for 640x480. 128x64 covers you nicely and gives you wiggle room. If you're doing a horizontal scroller, you might go to 256 wide to make life a bit easier if you have the RAM or 128 tall for vertical. Going to 256 by 128 I think is just being wasteful for 8 way mode. You can do it on 128 by 64 fine and the RAM cost is 32k. 320 by 240, 32 high is ample, 64 wide is ample, but you may want to double up in either or both directions for scrolling. You don't need to, but it can simplify some things. 64 to 128 is only another 4K. For convenience, might be worth it. 16 by 8 doesn't really gain you that much, only 64 wide is now capable of handling a 640 wide screen, and 32 wide for 320 for the 2K screen. If you're doing crazy demo effects, might be worth it. 8 by 16 lets you get 32 high covering a 480 screen, 16 by 16 lets you get down to a 32 by 64 on a 640 by 480 mode, and down to 32 by 32 on 320 by 240. But what you save in the screen might be lost in tiles, depending on how your artwork breaks up, what the depth is, etc. The next step is allocating some tiles. The Vera lets you have 1024, but you don't actually have to use all of them. Or allocate RAM for all of them if you don't need them. Also, you can count individually, so if you have five tiles to spare, you can drop a tile and gain a sprite or two if you need to. I find 128 tiles has been a good chunk. 64, as anybody who has used ECBM will tell you, is not enough for anything. 256 always feels tight. 384 gives you some headroom. 512 is pretty comfy. 1024 is overkill, but handy if you're doing a Japanese translation or want to get near bitmap mode for less RAM 
on 320 by 240. As you can see, 8 bits per pixel really eats RAM fast. 2 bit per pixel allows you to get a tight English font, A to Z numbers and some punctuation, 32 chars in just half a K. Sprites are the gravy. Once you have the map size you need, and then the tile number and depth you need, whatever VRAM is left is free for sprites. Again, 8 bits per pixel really eats RAM, with a 64 by 64 sprite taking 4K a pop. 8 by 8 as any NAS dev can tell you, is just a pest to work with, unless you are making a shooting game like Armlight or Drop Zone, with lots of bullets whizzing around. 16x16 16 16 is standard for a console, a bit small by C64 standards. 32x32 32 32 is a bit big for 320 mode, but it is the 16x16 16 16 of 640 mode. I find it better to think of sprites in how many do I get per K. This way, once you have subtracted your X for the map and Y for tiles, you then take what is left and multiply it by how many you get per K. Let's look at some examples. Say a Vera spec scrolling platformer. So we'll go 640 by 480. Um, I'll go with 8 by 8 chars. So 128 by 64 should do me. That's 16k, leaving me with 112. Um, I'll go with 512 tiles. 4 BPP should be fine, so that's another 16k, leaving me with 96k left. I'll go with 32 by 32 sprites at 4 BPP, which is 2 per k, so that's 192 sprites. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe let's add a hut. So I'll need to put a single 2 BPP layer on top, 8 by 8 chars, so I'll need another 128 by 64 layer, which is 16k. And I need the HUD tile set, 128 will do, 2 BPP, so that's 2k. So that now gives me 80k pre sprites, which leaves me with 80 times 2 is 160 sprites. Sounds good. Or how about a single screen collect em up, something like Bomb Jack. So we'll go with 320 by 240, 8 BPP. So a 64 by 32 is ample. That's 4K. I'll need 1024. 8 BBP 8 by 8 tiles to give me almost a bitmap look, which is 64k. This leaves me with 60k for sprites. Uh, 16 by 16 will be fine. We'll go with 8 BBP so it matches. That's 8 per k, giving me 480 sprites. This could probably be made into a calculator app or website. If you'd be interested in such a thing, do drop a comment and let me know. The Vera also supports bitmap mode. You have the options of 2, 4 or 8 bits per pixel, which due to how much RAM they eat, I've tabled 160 by 120 as well. Or as I like to call it, Game Boy mode. 320 by 240, C64 mode. 640 by 480, VGA mode. A tick means you can have the mode, double buffer and have two layers. A club means you can double buffer or dual layer. Nothing means you only get one screen and that's it. Red means you can't even have one screen. Four color mode gives you a lot of options with all resolutions being possible. 16 color mode still lets you double buffer a 64 mode or if you go 64 multicolor mode, i.e. 160 wide, you can double buffer and dual layer. 256 color mode in GB resolution you can go all out, 64 mode single image, and then any higher than that you're out of RAM. Bitmap mode, especially given the port axis, is best left to static images, such as title screens and loading images. Not something the machine is really designed to make games on.